Study Session 5 Categorical Syllogism Introduction This study session will focus on the meaning and the basic features of syllogism. Also to be explored here includes mood of categorical syllogism and the figure of categorical syllogism. Learning Outcomes When you have studied this session, you should be able to 1. Define and use correctly the term syllogism 2. Describe the features of categorical syllogism 3. Explain the mood of categorical syllogism 4. Determine the figure of a categorical syllogism. Syllogism As stated earlier, a syllogism is a deductive argument in which the conclusion is drawn from two premises. A categorical syllogism, therefore, is an argument in which the conclusion which itself is a categorical proposition, is drawn from two categorical propositions. Features of Categorical Syllogism A standard form categorical syllogism has the following features. 1. It must have only three terms. These are known as the major term, the minor term, and the middle term. The major term is the predicate term of the conclusion of the argument. The minor term is the subject term of the conclusion of the argument. The middle term is that term that appears in both premises of the argument but not in the conclusion. We can also classify the premises of a categorical syllogism into the major and minor premises. The major premise contains the major term, while the minor premise contains the minor term. 3. In writing a categorical syllogism in a standard form, the major premise is written first, followed by the minor premise, and then the conclusion comes last. Identify the major, minor, and middle term in this argument below. All proteins are organic compounds whence all enzymes are proteins, as all enzymes are organic compounds. To attempt this, we have to first identify the conclusion and this will be easily done by breaking the argument into a standard form which is represented below. All proteins are organic compounds. All enzymes are proteins. Therefore, therefore all enzymes are organic compounds. Mood of a categorical syllogism The mood of a categorical syllogism is determined by the types of categorical propositions which it contains. It is usually represented by three letters, each standing for the form of each of the propositions which the syllogism contains. For example, in the argument, no heroes are cowards. Some soldiers are cowards. Therefore, some soldiers are not heroes. The mood will be E-I-O. However, the mood of a categorical syllogism does not completely characterize its form. Consider the following two syllogisms. 
1. All great physicians are university graduates. Some clinic owners are university graduates. Therefore, some clinic owners are great physicians. 2. All swimmers are egoists. Some swimmers are paupers. Therefore, some paupers are egoists. Both arguments are of the mood A, I, I. But they are different in form. We can bring out this difference most clearly by displaying the logical skeleton. Let us represent the major term with P, the minor term with S, and the middle term with M. For both arguments, we then have the representation. Argument 1. All P is M. Some S is M. Therefore, some s is p argument two all m is p some m is s therefore some s is p in the first argument whereas the middle term occupies the predicate position of both premises in the second argument the middle term occupies the subject position of both premises. This explains the reason for their difference in form. The correct form of a categorical syllogism is identified by naming its mood and figure. Figure of a categorical syllogism the figure of a categorical syllogism is determined by the position of the middle term in the premises of the argument. There are four possible figures a syllogism may have. They are the following. Figure 1. This is when the middle term occupies the subject position of the major premise and the predicate position of the minor premise. Figure 2. This is when the middle term occupies the predicate position of both premises. Figure 3. This is when the middle term occupies the subject position of both premises. Figure 4. This is when the middle term occupies the predicate position of the major premise and the subject position of the minor premise. Going by our earlier alphabetical representations of the terms, we can then present the different figures in the following schema. Figure 1 M is P S is M. Therefore, S is P. Figure 2. P is M. S is M. Therefore, S is P. Figure 3. M is P. M is S. Therefore, S is P. Figure 4. P is M. M is S. Therefore, S is P. We can only give a complete description of the form of any standard categorical syllogism by naming its mood and figure. Study Session Summary in this study session, we examine categorical syllogism. A categorical syllogism has three terms. These are the major term, the minor term, 
and the middle term. The major term is the predicate term of the conclusion of the argument. The minor term is the subject term of the conclusion of the argument. The middle term is that term that appears in both premises of the argument but not in the conclusion. Also, every categorical syllogism has a mood and a figure. The mood of a categorical syllogism is determined by the types of categorical propositions which it contains, while the figure of a categorical syllogism is determined by the position of the middle term in the premises of the argument. That ends study session 5. Thank you for listening.